So um, I forgot to record, so I just hit record right now. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about choosing the content. And again, this is gonna be primarily like from my background, uh, what I have done. Uh, most of this comes from um, teaching an online statistics course that I have a wide variety of videos there and then my experience in the spring. That's really like I'm not, it's not like I have this YouTube channel with, I have 360 subscribers or something. I don't, it's not like, it's not like I have all these videos. So those, my primary two experiences are the statistics class that was online for a decade um, that gets like, I just looked, I had 6,000 views in the last month. So the sum. Um, and then in the spring, I made a ton of videos in the spring. I spent way too much time on them because that was like enjoyable when not much else was. So um, what I, one thing that I'll do is I'll do, um, this was for my stats class, I'll do a little preview about what the week is gonna be. And those are, those are very brief. Just here's what we're gonna do this week. Um, we have desire to learn D2L. So I'd actually, I wouldn't post the link. I would actually embed it on the homepage every, in a news announcement. That's what I would do for the weekly preview, not the lecture. There'd be a little bit of content in there. This was like regression that week. There'd be a little bit of content in there, but not, but I didn't do the lectures there. This was just, here's what we're gonna talk about. Um, and I started doing this and students actually commented in the evaluations that they liked seeing the face there every week. Just seeing that, that slight like connection. We weren't doing any synchronous classes. That was completely asynchronous. Um, second thing is sometimes I'll have just some topic that I want to talk about. Like I did a survey. This was in the spring. I did a survey. Well, I want to share the results and talk about what you all said and like what I learned from it and responding to some of the concerns there. So that was just kind of a, every once in a while, I would do a class communication. Um, and I just think sometimes the question about what you're going to do in a video and what you're not, when you have a bunch of announcements, sometimes like three paragraphs just gets overwhelming. And so sometimes if you have that and you have the video talking through it, you're gonna reach more students. But this is where it's so hard for me because a lot of this is just, I don't know, that sounds reasonable. I don't know if it's actually true <laughs> that, that I'm actually reaching more students with that. So it's a lot of this is just anecdotal. Uh, and then the last one in the spring, I did do lecture videos that I created for Calc 3 and these were, some of these were long. Some of them were even more than 20 minutes. So my stats ones were pretty short. The sections are short. You can, like in a stats class, the content is like five minutes. And then it's all about looking at all the different applications of it. In a Calc 3 class, the five minutes you get through like half a theorem, yeah. that's all you have time for. So, so those were much longer. And I'll show you how I did these. I did not put these on the news post. I actually put them as like content items and linked to them. Um, and the talk about engaging, I don't know if it's engaging. I mean, they had to write notes. So <laughs> we gave, I gave them blank notes and they had to fill them in. So they're engaged kind of, you know, I don't know if that's, if that counts as an engaging video because they're writing notes for them. So we were trying to emulate the, the lecture environment. Hey Dan. Um, yes. Are you, are you, are you saying you gave them guided notes? Yes. That they would do? Okay, gotcha. Yep, yep. Um, I have colleagues who did not, and they just recorded lectures that the students would write down and chunked it up. Um, Chris Campbell from our institution, she would do like two or three examples per video. Each video would be five to 10 minutes. Um, and so, but she didn't have guided notes, but, but I do, and Chris, you do as well. Um, we have a couple other, a lot of us do, we actually, our college printed packets and mailed them to the students. So, but not everybody has that. So maybe something for you to think about when you're planning for the spring. Um, printing costs are pretty reasonable. You can, cause I quoted it at, I don't remember where it was, but you could upload your PDF and they could print the whole semester for like 10 bucks. So if students, had, if students wanted that. Um, yeah, so the weekly previews would be embedded here right on an announcement. Those would be embedded. So it's right in front of them. So it's like asking you to hit play. You don't have to click, like it's not just a link you click on. It's like, ooh, ooh, play, let me hit play. See what happens. Um, oh, by the way, these are all in YouTube. So I'm a huge YouTube uh, proponent uh, because of the cross-platform portability, the easiness of embedding it or linking it um, or 
when you're on a smaller device, it automatically reformats it. If your internet connection is slow, it just gives you a lower quality connect. Like it doesn't use as much data. So, so I'm a huge YouTube um, proponent uh, for courses just for the, all of those various reasons. So the, those two were embedded. And then when I had the lecture videos, they just went, you can kind of see over here on the right, they just went in as content items that the students would, would click. Um, that's desire to learn. I'm, that's the only one I know, so I don't know how other platforms work. Um, a lot of people don't do the videos that way. They have a web page with a, a plan for that week and then links to the videos from that like weekly guide. That seems to work really well for a lot of people as well. So each week would have a guide. Does anybody have like structure or you, where you have some videos that you've linked uh, for content? Like how are you connecting students to those? Um, for me, if there's any, if there's any link videos that I would, I'd like to have students see, like, for example, I'm doing finite right now. And if um, I didn't make my own videos of using graphing calculators to do simplex method. So, but I found a, a, a couple of decent ones. I usually just link them. We use canvas at uh, KCC and I, I just usually just send them the link. Um, not send them the link, just have the link embedded in the page, not the actual video embedded, but, but usually sometimes I can, sometimes I just do links, sometimes I do videos. It depends. Um, I just want to make sure you make the links descriptive and not just the URL. Right. But you always, you always want to change the link to make it a descriptive link, but that's kind of what I do for, for outside videos. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any like a plan that you use to like, how are you telling students if you have lecture videos, how are you getting it to them? Um, I also, I'm from uh, College of Lake County and um, we have Canvas or we just started Canvas. We used to be Blackboard. Um, but uh, I, uh, on Canvas, you can create a, a page and then embed the uh, lecture and, as well as add the guided notes. So I put the guided notes first on top and then um, at embed the lecture. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Tara, I think, were you going to add something? So you're yeah, um, I maintain my own website. Um, okay. So I have all their content there um, for the entire semester laid out in weekly chunks. Um, but then we also use D2L. So I also put that stuff into their D2L calendar. I put it in as their announcements and I email it to them. <laughs> I am, I am all about. Yeah. Oh, we lost your audio, I think. Yeah, it's interesting how I found that this is generally what I do for my stats class too. And students get pretty good. I was every week posting on Monday. Here's the weekly welcome video. And then here's the link of all the stuff you have to watch this week. And then last week I forgot, like I had a draft post and I totally forgot and they, they, they found all the videos, watched them all, did the quizzes that were corresponding. So it was, it was impressive. Like, I feel like I'm helping them with these news posts and put everything. They probably were worried like, oh, now what do I do? But everything's in folders under the content. And it was like, well, well I guess they figured it out. So um, yeah, so, so those are the three ways where I'll do it. I'll embed it um, or I'll put it as a content item. Sometimes I will just do the links too. So here's the question about making engaging videos. Um, one thing that I like to do, this is where I'm a huge fan. You saw on some of those videos, like that was me in the picture. Like I just think that seeing that face there really helps students connect you with a real person and you're not just a voice. So I'm a firm believer of, you know, if you have the ability to get that technology, um, or, you know, usually it's not super complicated. You don't have to have a separate camera like I do. I have my laptop over here and it has a camera. Um, that's this one from this angle. But, but I don't like looking down onto the screen when I'm writing. So that's why I bought the extra external webcam so that I can talk to the camera up here while I'm writing down here. And it's like, I can talk to the camera. Speaking of, by the way, you, get, you do get used to that. So right now I'm making eye contact with you all by looking at a little dot. And if I really want to make a big point, you just have to get really close to the camera. 
and you make a big point by getting really close to the camera and looking at the little dot right there, that little dot. Um, so the more you can do little things like that, I like to try to let my personality show, um, which is awkward at first. Um, I have to share, the technology today is terrible. My watch is buzzing because my nine-year-old is calling me from the park probably, like, just call mom, buddy, sorry. <laughs> um, um, so I'm, I'm doing Zoom classes right now to go over homework questions and um, I have like two cameras on, rest black screens. And there's a lot of reasons why that doesn't bother me anymore. I'm used to it and that's not really the point of this particular thing. But one of the students commented on there when I did my survey, she said, or he said that, um, even though I have my camera off and you can't see me, I want you to know I always laugh at your jokes with you. Like, so, so it's like, you know, what's the difference between me streaming a class and me doing a video? If I can let my personality come through, but it, it's just awkward because you're joking to yourself and some future audience that doesn't exist yet. So how comfortable you are with that, you may just not be funny. So maybe that's not something you want to do, but the more you can like try you to add a laugh track or something, just to right. make it. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I you mean, know if you how to edit cameras, videos you're and like... add in stuff, like there are cool clips you can add in. Didn't you do that, Chris? What clips? Didn't you add in some clip to yours? Uh, oh. It was in the lecture video, I think. I can't remember. We shouldn't disclose why I'm looking at your lecture videos. Anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, like, you have two cameras, you, like, two cameras, a director, and a laugh track is like a professional TV show, right? right. Like, so you're yes. most of the way there. Yes. <laughs> um, I also have, like, an actual video camera that I would record for a lot of my more professional looking videos. Um, that, and I have, like, lots of lights. <laughs> so lighting is a big deal, too. I'll talk a little bit more about that. That's really, like, how you, what you want to do. Like, that's not a priority. But... So for me, one bit of engaging is just trying to let your personality come through on the video. Whatever your personality is, they see you as a real person. Um, Chris and I have talked about this, about like what happens if you make a mistake? Like, how do you handle that? Do you like re-record the video? Do you, like if you catch it in the moment, do you edit that out? I have done that before. So I've learned if you want, if you have editing software and you want to edit it out, what you do is you stop, make sure you have a long period of silence that you can find it on the track later, and you restart and pick it up. <laughs> so you don't have to like re-record the whole thing. But what happens if you don't catch it till later? How do you handle that? Is it okay to have mistakes in your videos? Like, do you want your students to just think you're a math magician and you never make mistakes? And what happens when your kids interrupt or your, your son is playing his baritone lesson when you are almost finished recording your video? So for me, I like to let some of that come through. Um, the, the, my, my main thing about keeping things engaging is try to make it like visu visually engaging so students are you know, like it's interesting and they're following along and they see you. Um, try to have them do something while they're in the video. So if that's taking notes, like they're kind of like they're engaged with that. Um, and then the other thing that I do in my stats class is I have video quizzes. So there's a knowledge check after every quiz. It's like five questions, just like key concepts, but every video has a follow-up quiz. So it kind of like, well, I better pay attention and take some notes because there's going to be a quick video quiz on that. Um, I don't know that that works for everything. Uh, it's working well for me with the stats videos. Um, what about C here? How do you get students to watch the videos? Um, there has to be some value there, right? So for me, again, my stats class, they have the quizzes that are based on videos. So if you don't watch the videos, you can't take the quizzes. They're, they're, they're not worth a ton of points, but you know, there has to be some value there. Um, I think students like the example, the examples that you work out in your lecture notes, they have to see value in those that they're learning with those and you're giving them information that they couldn't just Google somewhere else. If they could just look on Khan Academy, maybe you should just be linking to Khan Academy and giving those examples and then using your kind of having some more fine-tuned stuff that you're talking about. That's this question about should I record it or should I just share what's already done? Um, so I'm interested to Michael's earlier point about this. Does anybody have any other thoughts about how to get 
students engaged in the videos and make them more engaging? Can I ask a question, Dan, about, um, you said how to get students to watch the video and you said yeah, yeah. you give them, they can't do the quiz until they watch the video. So the video is worth a, a few points. Yeah, so. Like how do you manage that, I guess? Like me, making sure they're watching the video. Oh, I, I guess I'm not. Um, okay. I think what I mean, like they can't do the quiz without the video is they just won't understand the questions that are on the quiz. Oh, sure, sure. That's the only reason why. So it's not restricting them. Okay. You know, it doesn't say like, you know, sometimes you can put these like, um, what is it? There's some type of thing you have to pass before you can take the quiz. Right. There's something like that in there. Whoops, not assignments, quizzes. Okay. So they're just, they're just in here as these little uh, check for understandings and they just click on these um, and there are just, just a few questions, but there's stuff that they couldn't really do without having watched the video first. So this okay, is about right. so it's not as big as like a massive quiz, but I, I, I like that, thank you. No, so these, these, these are like 5% of their grade, and these are just, um, just quick, like do you understand the key vocabulary from that section, that's all. So they're kind of a quiz on your notes. Okay. I actually used these same videos and that same thing when I taught a hybrid class. Now I would have them beginning of every day, we'd have five minutes where they would do the check for understanding quiz. And then do they, have to, do they have to score a certain like requisite score on those quizzes to access the homework or is it? No, in fact, so this semester I'm like, man, why do I care? how many times they do this or whatever. So I like, I gave them three attempts. I have it indicated to show them how many points they scored if they got partial credit on a problem. And so it's more like, you can keep going if you want. And then, but there's no, I don't have anything that then depends on that because they're just questions I wrote. And so they're not algorithmic, they're static questions. And so, um, so I gave them multiple attempts. This, since we're online now, um, I gave them multiple attempts and even told them which problems they got wrong. So then they can go back. I give three attempts. So, yeah. So that, I mean, they, they're, this is my best semester so far in that class, which is odd. It's all, it's been, I've been teaching it online since fall of 2009. And my success rates are always, they're usually really terrible there. You know, you get like half the students finish the semester um, from the ones enrolled on the first day, but it's way, it's much better this semester. I, I don't know why. It could be that I'm getting more students that would normally have taken it face to face. And so, you know, my mix of students isn't the same. So I don't know. Anybody have I any other things, Natalie? Go ahead, uh, Natalia, sorry, Natalia. <laughs> I no problem. Um, I was just wondering, um, you know, I have never done YouTube, but we have at uh, CLC Panopto, um, and the Panopto, uh, maybe because I'm getting used to it, has that feature. You can ask a, a question during the middle of the yeah. lecture, and but it's short. Like, you can make it multiple choice or true, false, um, but I'm also teaching stats, so... The uh, sounds symbols, awesome. the symbols are the hard part you can't do, but I, I, I try to just more content. Uh, but I don't know if uh, like how to rate the engagement, like if they, you know, they, if they jump to the end of the video, let's say if it's a 15 minute video, if they want to go to minute 10 and I had a question at minute five, they can't get to minute 10 until they've answered that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that sounds awesome to me to ask some periodic questions as you go through. Yeah, I've, I have no familiarity with any platform like that. Oh, speaking of, oh, shoot, I don't have my document up here. Um, so basically, YouTube doesn't do that. Is that the... Correct. So okay. YouTube, I mean, at least as far as I'm aware, I know there are products that... Um, so I'm trying to open up. I had a list. I'm going to... I want to... I might post in the chat my list of like, different packages, software packages and resources. And so I might ask you to add that one if you can. But my understanding is that YouTube videos are just videos and there's no way to interact, to add like an interactive thing. 
Um, I use Camtasia to do my editing and it has, I've, I haven't tried it, but it has a way to produce it's like, like with a quiz questions embedded in it, but it's like, it's proprietary. It's like its own thing. It's not a thing you can then upload to YouTube. It has to be like that file. It sounds kind of similar. All right, so I'm gonna paste this link. I think this is shared with everybody here. It should be public. Your, um, your quiz is password protected where you give the password during the uh, video lecture. You could, I mean, yeah. I, it's kind of evil, I know, but <laughs> I, I know somebody on here does it. I'm not saying any names, Kate. Um, <laughs> I know she's here somewhere. For me, I definitely lean on the side of, I want to create stuff where students see value in it rather than they're forced to do something. So, but that's just my philosophy. Like if it's not valuable enough video that they can like skip and then get the quiz right without watching my video, why do they need to watch my video then? It's not helpful. So I, I, don't, I don't do that. I mean, I, I don't mean to like say that's a terrible idea and you should never do that. And just for me personally, that just doesn't, not, doesn't align with my personal philosophy. I'm gonna add some, a link to the chat here. This is a Google document that has um, a bunch of video creation resources. So if you want to, I think I have you the ability to edit, that's probably a bad idea. I'm gonna <laughs> let you all be commenters. So if you have something that you think looks good, you wanna add to a particular category, um, you should be able to add a comment there. Hey, how about this product? Or how about this device? Or how about this recording software? Because once you start looking at record screen capture software, like all of a sudden, there's so many options and you have to just, you have to just pick one. All right, I'm gonna move back in here. I have too many windows open. I'm gonna get into more logistics a little bit later, but I wanna just talk next about, about equity. So some of this is like the equity we should always be thinking about. We should always be thinking about who's represented in our examples or um, who is going to be, who is going to listen to this? What are students going to see when they're seeing the things, the images that we're using? Like those are important all the time. But now, now when we're in a digital environment, there also is additional accessibility issue, issues. So when you're using like what font size, don't make an assumption that everybody's working on a 21 inch widescreen monitor. Um, some of them are going to be on Chromebooks. And then I had a student in my survey in my spring say, you know, it's going okay, but the classes are hard to watch on my phone. And so I was like, well, you know, I can't, like there's a balance there. I can't use font size 80, because then there's like three words on the screen, but I could probably use a bigger font size. And when I'm handwriting, I could probably just write bigger on the screen to make it a little bit easier to read. So I adjusted what I did for the rest of the semester. Um, somebody had asked about transcripts and captioning. Um, there are some, some different options for that. Uh, this particular meeting should be uh, captioned, but that's not a default Zoom thing. We're, pre, we're like piloting a new feature. So this is another reason why I like YouTube. It's not great, but it has a default auto captioning. Um, it's intelligible. So that's better than unintelligible. So. You can kind of get the gist of what it means. Some of the math stuff it struggles with, but so does this one. This one, the Zoom one that I looked at after the fact, it struggled with some of the terminology I was using. So, so YouTube does have an auto transcript that you can edit after the fact. Um, I think if I had a student who needed the captioning on the videos, I would probably ask my distance learning department and someone there to assist me because it just doesn't seem reasonable to ask me to spend those hundreds of hours to caption all of those videos because it's a labor intensive. So to me, the YouTube auto captioning is okay until I'm told otherwise, it seems okay. So uh, this is my recording setup here. So uh, I just kind of want to tell you what I do 
And this kind of addresses some of the people about like, what do you want to record on here? So the second monitor is not really a big deal. Um, the tablet I like because it flips over and then um, you can use a pen and you can handwrite on, there's different software packages. I use Microsoft OneNote. And so the convertible laptop is nice because it has its own camera if you want to use the camera, but you can also flip it over and handwrite on there if you're doing that kind of, of notes. So what I did is you can't see it on here. This is just a blank one, but to Mike's earlier question, I actually imported my guided notes into OneNote and then wrote on my guided notes in OneNote. Um, and then I would have, I would record at the same time. I'm questioning whether it's worth explaining this. Probably not. I also put my face over the screen. Okay. It was a little complex how I did it, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I was going to ask how you did that. Do you do like a picture in picture or do you okay. do you like go back and do you toggle back and forth it's between three, cameras three or something? It's 332. We only have 28 minutes left. So I'm going to take some of this time right now. So um, Camtasia has its own thing. Actually, some of these other ones do too. Um, over here, this uh, Screencast-O-Matic, is that the one? Screencastify, this one. Screencastify is a plugin. I have it actually plugged in right here. And you just click on this and um, you can say, oh, I want to record, I want to embed a camera. I want to use this particular microphone. And then what do I want to record? I want to record my whole desktop. Boom, hit record. And then in the corner, there will be a little webcam. Done. Not fancy, but a little webcam. And then you brought me here to show this too. <laughs> it's yep. toward the same question, but I don't know if you have a different time that you're waiting for that. No, this is perfect. So let me let me say it's all about what I do, and then I'm Chris. So Chris and I just talked the other day, and then Chris is a bad person to have in your department because you think you're doing all this cool stuff, and then you talk to Chris, and then you're like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so much cooler. So, so Chris will talk about his in a minute. So I use Camtasia. Um, it does record that little camera, but it records it as a separate, um, like a separate layer and you can resize it. You can crop it out separately. You can move it wherever you want. You can zoom in to have it full screen when you want to. So it's editable. The screencastify, the simple, simple ones are not. It's just, that's where it is. It's in the corner. It's that size. It's that resolution done. So in Camtasia, which is not free software, um, you can, it's a whole separate line and you can resize it and do whatever you want. But I was not satisfied with that because it only records in 640 by 480. So if you want to go full screen, you don't look very good. So what I did is I actually would hit record in Camtasia, no dot, no camera. Then in the separate camera app, hit record. So my camera is recording an HD separate file at the same time. That's 1280 by 720. And then I would edit them together after the fact. But that's because I was obsessive compulsive and I had the green screen. Chris will show you what that looks like. It's super cool because then you're just your body over your notes. And I wanted that look. So that was, I don't know that that was a good investment of my time, but it was really fun. I, <laughs> You guys are next level. I mean, seriously. Okay. I'm like low budget over here. You guys, okay. there, but there's see, a big gap between us right now. Well, that's this what I mean. Awesome, so this, though. <laughs> this Screencastify is super easy to do. It's a, it's a Chrome plugin. And you just have the plugin. You tell it what you want to record. You hit record. And then you're done. There's, you can do five minute videos and you, you can capture your screen. You can capture whatever you're doing. This is capturing the whole desktop. So whatever I'm doing on the desktop, it's going to capture. That. So if I have my OneNote open, I can write on OneNote while that's going. Right. So it, there's another one, Dan. It's called yep. Loom, L-O-O-M, and it's free for educators. And it gives you that little. Um, you could have your your face camera to be yep. a small circle or a larger circle, or you can swap it so that your face is big. But it's still it's still just a circle though. It's not fancy with the Yeah, but still, like there's, yeah. this is what I mean. Like there's a lot of products out there. So Chris, why don't you, do I have, I don't think I have participant sharing off. Do you want to share your screen, Chris, or do you want to just describe it? Um, sure, no, I can share the screen a little bit. 
So the, the software I use to put together my stuff is called OBS, Open, it's just Open Broadcasting Software. Um, I'm using it right now, actually. So let me, uh, it's the screen maybe. Uh, okay, I see Zoom is not what I'm familiar with. So can you see what's going on here? Like you see my box and you see a yes. little bit of stuff down here? Okay. Yes, we so, can see the whole OBS screen. Okay, we're so little, we're honestly a little overwhelmed right now. You're overwhelmed? Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> so OBS lets you, it, it's basically designed for like a director of a show, except the main deal here is that it's free and it's easy to do things. So um, over here you have scenes and you like make a scene and then once you make a scene then you can make sources to put in the scene. So what I have here is I have, um, let's just make a new scene. So I made a new scene, it's blank, there's nothing here. And then I go plus and I say I want a video capture device, I want my camera. And then I can pick myself up and put myself wherever I want to be or like resize myself. Um, then I can say, oh, I also want like my monitor. Uh-oh. Oh, well, okay. Well, yes, that's what it would look like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then the reason that this is really powerful is that you can use it. You can use whatever you make on here as a camera. So like I have a scene running and I'm using it as my camera in Zoom and you like can't tell. So, um, wait, can you tell? I don't know if I'm making any sense. Because you're using, you're using the new scene. So yeah. your, your camera in Zoom is your new scene. Yes. Right. Okay, so just to show you like what, I'm, what I generally do with the scenes, like, because um, you can make lots of different you can put lots of sources on the screen at the same time. So like, say I have my TI-84 calculator open. I can say, well, I want a window capture. Um, I don't know. I want it to be the TI-84. And then like my TI-84 is here and I can put it somewhere, and, like make it bigger. And then I go, oh crap, my TI-84 is over my face. So I like drag myself above it and now I'm over the TI-84. So it's powerful because it's like all the tools that you would need to basically direct a like TV show, but it's easy to do in like a low quality way. And you also get to do little gags. Like you say like over there and you go like, wait, hang on. And you go right over here. <laughs> yeah. So this is use this, this is like in zoom meetings. This is your camera. The scene is right. Your camera. Right. So like I have a scene, I guess I can show you like what my class periods look like. I have, oh, please get out of here. Ah. <laughs> I don't have Zoom and this open usually. Um, I have like, so this is like my calculator view where like I have a big calculator and then a little window of my screen and like some words that describe what's supposed to be going on. Um, but you don't have to go crazy with it. That's the point. The point is that you're, you're your scene can just be like your camera and your web browser, or your scene can be your camera and your monitor. Um, yep. And, and then this, again, if you have the OneNote up or some kind of writing white pad, you can do that in Zoom. There's a white pad and you're writing over that. Mm -hmm. All you need is a green screen behind you to get this look that Chris has. Right. So I, um, once I have the scene set up that I want to, that I want to use like in a Zoom meeting. So I have this scene down here called scene for Zoom meetings. It has my camera. It has some stuff here that it has a background image and it has like a text box that I can put here to be like BRB and turn it on and then turn off my camera. <laughs> um, so once you have your scene set up, then there's a, just a button over here called start virtual camera. And it makes kind of like a fake camera that then you tell Zoom that that's your camera. And then the Zoom uses uses this program as the camera. Um, so the upside of this is that it's easy and it's free and it's it's like powerful. The downside is like sometimes it feels a little bit too powerful. So you feel like, oh my God, wait, get BRB off my face, please. <laughs> uh, 
It's a little I was bit too powerful, so you <laughs> <laughs> so you feel like oh, like you can get sucked into it. Um, and then the other downside is you you almost definitely need two monitors one way or another to make it happen, um, because you need like the monitor where the action is happening and like the director monitor where you can like switch to a different scene where I have like this is my this is this is my office hours scene. So I switch to office hours and then I can say like, okay, I'll be right back. And I like click myself away. Um, but this is OBS open broadcasting software. And the reason I wanted to show it today is just that this virtual camera, it used to be kind of tricky to set up, but in the latest version, it's really easy to make this thing be your Zoom camera. And you can, like there's a start recording, like you can use OBS to record videos too. Yep, right. So you click start recording and it'll just save a video and it's, it doesn't save the video of the Zoom meeting. So this would be if you wanted to just save yourself and not a video of the students. This gives you a nice way to like peel yourself out so you're not like posting videos of students' faces. I still can't figure out whether we're supposed to worry about that or not. But yeah. Um, yeah. So you can start recording and it just saves a video. And then if you are streaming to YouTube or Twitch or whatever, the, People who stream for a living use this software, but like it's just it's just not hard anymore, and it used to be hard. So I just wanted to make sure people saw it. Hey, ask can me I something. ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, so you said that it, it uh, creates an, like an artificial camera in Zoom. Do you know happen to know if it works like that in Google Meets or any other platform it, that I could just select it as my camera? I don't know, but it just it convinces it like tells Windows that. It, this is a camera source, so it shouldn't. It should work. It matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it should work for anything that needs a camera. That should but, just be another thing in the drop down. Yeah, but I've only tried it on Zoom, so I, I'm not like 100 percent sure. And when when you save the video, um, when you record and it saves the video, it saves on your computer. It doesn't like put it somewhere else. Right. Or it saves it in like the. It saves it in the videos folder, and it's a. Uh, um, I don't remember what format it is, but it's a format that I just upload to YouTube. So, um, so accessible. So cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it probably has like significant options for uploading other video types. Like, there's way more. I've never even clicked around in here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's an advanced menu. <laughs> that wasn't advanced enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but that's cool. Yeah. Awesome, Chris. Thanks okay. so much. Mm -hmm. um, let me make this go away. All right. Oops. So where were we? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, just some other hardware things. So just for more of my setup, I do have an external mic that I like. I have that external webcam. None of this is required. The laptop mic, in, internal mic is fine. Earbuds are fine. Your headphones are fine. I just think it looks fancy. I think it makes me feel cool. I don't know. Um, I do have the pen. So if you're writing with a tablet, like you need a pen. You need the tablet pen. Like it's so much better than anything else that you have. Like that stylus, you need that stylus pen. Um, yeah. Oh, does somebody ask me something? Sorry. I have a question. I use an iPad um, mm -hmm. to record mine, and I'm having issues with it. One of the issues is when I'm recording with the microphone with the screen, I always have to turn it off and turn it back on again. Otherwise, the sound is five minutes behind oh, <laughs> the, wow. uh, the screen. And I even go you know, Google searched it. It's the same with the phone. You know, the iPhone, that both have that issue. And they haven't fixed it. <laughs> so, but so, like, I also, you have, so what if was you that? Have your mic, like, do you have an, are you saying if you have a mic connected to it or just if you're having No, it's the microphone and the iPad. Yeah. So, so, you know, if I want my voice recorded as I'm writing on wow. the iPad, they don't match unless I have to, you know, restart. <laughs> And then That's I have to sync kidding. my pen with it again and everything. So it's such a pain. But That's anyway, I was, I, you were talking about some of the things like Screencastify and Loom and all that. I was looking for ways to incorporate other things into that video. And, and I use GoodNotes for mine. 
And I was wondering if anybody had any experience with that. You know, I'm just kind of stuck with my uploading my guided notes and, and using those. But how could I incorporate more into that if anybody's had experience with that? Can you tell us a little bit about GoodNotes? GoodNotes is like OneNote, Microsoft OneNote, I believe. Okay. Does anyone have any experience with that? I, I am not a Mac user, so I do not. I'm not really a Mac user until this uh, too. Right? So. We're all like, <laughs> I mean, well, I'm not really either, but I am now, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't give you any more guidance with that. It doesn't seem like anyone else has used the, the good notes either on their iPad. So, yeah, I'm on the same plan as Dan, where it's basically like open a PDF in a drawing program and write on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you don't, I don't want to be in a position like, well, you should get a new device. If you have an iPad, <laughs> it would be fine. They're iPads. Like, I know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if there's a different, it has a built-in screen recorder, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's like some other app you can try instead that maybe it's an app software related. Yeah. Uh, Natalia, did you want to add something? Um, I use uh, my iPad with Zoom. So when you hit share screen, mm -hmm. there should be an iPad version. I have it connected to my USB to the iPad and then I can, um, and then yeah. when I hit record. You probably can't, can you see my Zoom window on here? You probably can't. I think I have it turned off where you can't see the Zoom stuff. But yeah, if all of you right now click on, on share screen, you'll see one of the options is iPhone, iPad. So that's what you use, Natalia. Like, do you do that to record a video? Like just by yourself, Correct. you're in a solo Zoom meeting? Yeah, so I open up my Zoom, my own personal Zoom. So I have my picture, I'll share my screen. Or the, the problem with sharing my iPad, I can't do then the TI Smart View because it takes over. It only lets a picture of me and the, and the, uh, um, iPad. And then uh, I like how um, Chris was saying that you can show your, you know, the notes, your the calculator at the same time. If I wanted to do the calculator and my notes, I would have to use like Word or PDF. And then I don't have, um, I would have to use my finger to, <laughs> on the mouse for annotating it, which I, is, is impossible with this yeah. iPad. Yeah. But you can share the iPad and do it that way. I've done that where I just wanted to, to draw something. Mm -hmm. That's worth considering. Yeah. Um, if you have, so I see Dawn, I've heard of this one as well, explain everything on the iPad. If you would be so kind, if you want to scroll up in the chat and click on that doc and just put some comments in and I can add them to that document for your future reference. So if anybody has any additional ones you want to add, because there's just, there's a ton of options out there and this is just kind of to plant some seeds. So let's, I've talked about this already. I want to talk a little bit about sharing videos. Um, I know from my pre-survey, only about half the people had a YouTube channel. You've hear, heard me talk about it already. Chris has talked about it already. Um, Natalia had a different option for at her institution. So this isn't like a perfect thing. Uh, but for me, I do like YouTube just for the, how easy it is to share. Can share a link you can embed it students can watch it on their phone if they're on um network not on wi-fi it'll know that oh you don't you're you're gonna burn a lot of data and it'll just use a, a lower you can like do a lower quality you can do an sd instead of an hd and like you can you can watch it on your tv if you subscribe to my channel and click the bell for notifications um so like all the like it's so, so for me i like that it saves it there for future reference um, so that's just my personal, personal preference. I am going to, I was going to link to this document too, actually this presentation. So these hey, are links. Yes. Sorry. How long does it take it usually to, to render the videos for YouTube? Um, yeah, it depends on how much editing I'm done and how many layers there are in Camtasia. Um, if you are new to video editing, I would probably do some research because the current versions are very inefficient. So when I am rendering in Camtasia right now, I have to like walk away because I can't do anything else. 
it like sucks all the resources from my computer. And I'm not really happy with it. It didn't used to be that way. So something has changed in the last couple of versions. Um, and like I have a sabbatical in the spring where I'm video editing and I'm gonna probably just, I'm gonna have to learn like a real, like Adobe, uh, whatever, whatever it is. I can't remember the name of it right now off the top of my head, but like a real video editor because this is not working. So I don't know that I would, if I were starting from scratch right now, if I would recommend starting with Camtasia, I would almost do, you know, do Chris's OBS and do your layout the way you want and record. Um, you just can't, can you edit? Do you any editing after the fact, Chris, on yours? Or do you just record and then upload? I just record and upload. If, if something goes, like if there's, if there's a two minutes that I want to remove, I use the editor in YouTube but I only did it a couple, a couple times. And I use the same trick that you did where when, if I make an error that like I know I have to remove, I like make a loud noise and then a long period of, you know, the, the yeah. like I you'll need see, the director cut thing. You'll right? see like, the audio spike. Yeah, 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 you see the audio spike and then a blank and you go like, oh yeah, that's where I need to cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so I don't know, I'm not, it, it's like a good half hour, 45 minutes to render an hour long recorded zoom session so right now i was like i wasn't i don't know this is not worthwhile so i think the shorter videos that i was making were more reasonable like a 10 minute video um and the nice thing from camtasia is you can upload right to youtube you just upload right to youtube if you connect your youtube channel um and those were reasonable those were less than a half hour for sure but now i was editing some of the zoom things because i was like trying to figure out how to get students videos off and i figured that out now so i don't really need to edit them anymore but it was lengthy how long are your videos usually well these the ones that i was doing now were the zoom classes so they weren't really they were just if you miss the class i'll upload the class for you but i'm not going to edit it and it's going to be long and boring and i don't think anybody's going to watch them but I have them there in case anybody wants to see them. So, yeah, you know, my lecture videos that I was producing, like where Chris said, you got your cam your face over it, you got the notes behind you, you're writing on your tablet. Those were never, those were like 20, 15 to 20 minutes, usually for Calc 3. And those students, like, I was, I was remember, like you go in your YouTube stats and you look at your average watch time and it was like, here's an 18 minute video with a 14 and a half minute average watch time. Like, oh, that's not bad. It means like a lot of them are watching the whole thing. So I'll take it. So I think for the level of class, you can do longer videos. Um, that, that would be my suggestion that the lower the class, the shorter the videos you make. But, See, that's uh, so counterintuitive to me because I feel like the lower the class, the more they need. The more they need, the right. more they need. But, they, but I don't know that they have the endurance to watch it in such long spans. So I'm, I'm not saying here's a section of content smash it into a shorter video for beginning algebra. What I'm saying is you might be able to do one video for Calc 3 and they'll watch the whole thing and take your notes. But for beginning algebra, you might need four videos, broken it into chunks for them. The whole micro learning, <laughs> bite size stuff, right? That's, but I don't feel confident in making that statement because I don't have evidence to back it up right. that it's better. So I will say this as a mom, um, this is Dawn, as a mom of um, a student, a high school student who in the spring had to watch 30 and 40 minute long videos for his classes, it was extremely difficult for him to go back and find the information that he needed because it was spread out over such a long time. And so if you, I mean, whether they need, you know, more intense help or whatever, when I was watching him, I started making my videos intentionally between five, six, seven minutes so that when they need something, they can go find it much faster than trying to go through like 30 and 40 minutes of videos to find one particular thing that they want to hear again. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with Dawn on that. So I'm teaching Calc 3 to this semester. And I, I, I had one section where I had seven videos because I'm trying to make them between five and 10 minutes long for the exact same reason Dawn said was it'd be easier for them to find certain things. If, if I have a section with seven videos, then I will make a table of contents and I will say what, what things are in each video before. So then they can, they can, they can actually then go directly to the, the, the video that they need to. One thing you can do in YouTube. Sorry. 
Uh, that was weird. I was like, who's talking? Oh, that's me. <laughs> but in the Before this meeting, were you just watching yourself? <laughs> no, I just popped it over just now. Um, don't lie, don't lie, you were. <laughs> but you can put time markers. So if you have a longer video, you could, this is just, uh, this is an exam. Um, so I, I just, I don't go over exams in class. I just record a video and then they watch the video to correct their work and see what mistakes they made. Um, but you can just put time markers. So you could ostensibly do that like, hey, examples number one and two start at 125. And then, so you can put that in the description of the YouTube video as well, if you wanted to. I haven't done that, but that sounds like a really good idea now that you mentioned it. <laughs> so for finding things in the future, right? That's a really good point. So yeah, I like the smaller, the smaller videos for finding things in the future. Um, or, you know, if you have videos already made uh, up there, uh, you, can, you can time mark things in the description about when stuff is in the video. I just wanted to mention a couple of comments. These were just from my spring semester that students do like the YouTube videos. Like you see this, but some students appreciate the ability to pause and rewind. Not everybody does and lots of students say like, I, I don't like that I can't ask questions, you know, and it's not great. But some students do like the ability to pause, rewind. Um, and so that was really, they really appreciated that. And I think this last comment, like simulating the regular class, that's like, I'm still being silly. Um, that my, my favorite one is when we did triple integrals in spherical coordinates. My introduction started with like, okay, we've got double integrals. It's okay, fine, whatever. Triple integrals, rectangular coordinates, fine. Triple integrals and spherical coordinates, and then I like slammed my headphones off and walked out. So like you can, again, I think that they like that the humor in those videos because you're trying to simulate the class environment. That was a little bit different though. That was students who like, oh my God, we're in the global pandemic. We just left halfway through the semester. I know you, I don't know how that, how valuable that always is. Um, yeah, and then again, this person, they like rewatching it whenever they were able to, um, controlling the speed. Uh, some students do watch them at double speed. <laughs> I don't know how, but they do, <laughs> they do. So, so now what, you know, one of the things I really recommend is don't just like, I'm gonna record some videos, so dive in. Cause like you can have this whole plan and all of a sudden you realize, oh no, I really wish I had thought that through and done this from the beginning. And then like, then you have to decide, do I just let those live out there? Do I redo them? So really think about, okay, do I wanna just get something out so I can get through the pandemic? Then like, don't kill yourself. Um, maybe there's other stuff out there you can use. Maybe you can just record something super simple right now. Um, is this something I want to use for hybrid in the future? Maybe I want to take my time with it, be more careful. So kind of think about where it fits. Um, be honest with your current ability and skill. Nobody's going to, well, students will judge you, but who's care? Screw them. It doesn't matter. You have to do what you are comfortable with. Like, don't worry about the super high production value and having this perfect thing. You know, like, otherwise you'll just keep recording it and you'll never be happy with yourself. And that life's not fun that way. Um, if you can find other people you can work with, bounce ideas off of, maybe split up the labor in it, that would be great. Um, yeah, the, the letter F here is really like more about if you're gonna recreate this for a future course. Like, is this something you're gonna do over winter? Um, or if you're gonna go over next summer break and you're gonna so kind of lay this out. Okay, I have to create it, I'm gonna edit it. You know, am I going to review it? Where am I going to post it, upload it? Kind of think about all that time in there. Um, so those are just some ideas to think about, think about moving forward. Um, I think that was the end of my presentation. I usually want to take some questions, but before I forget, I do want to mention we have another session. We have two more sessions coming up. Um, Mike, when is yours next week? Are you still there, Mike? Yeah. Yours is next week. Mine is Mine's next the week. week. You're in two. Yeah. Yes. So mine is next week. Wait, I signed up for two? <laughs> what was I thinking? I don't even know because that's next week. I don't even know when it is. Where's that survey that we sent out? It's got to be in my calendar, right? Hold on. It's on it's my Thursday phone. of next week. I yeah, think and it's, it's just going to be a round table. 
it's just yeah. going to be a casual roundtable kind of talking about what's been going on, how your feelings about things. If, you, if you're interested in coming, yeah, it's 4 to 5.30 next week. If you're interested in coming, fill out that survey so we can kind of know what topics uh, that we have. And then I'll send out a Zoom link beforehand, just like for this one. That one will be more casual. I'm not presenting anything. I'm moderating. So that one will be more of a casual discussion. Just don't take much away from mine, which is in two weeks, which is about what people are doing in their online classes, not just with like lecture videos, but with assessment and with right. synchronous and asynchronous learning and what are the good things going on and what are the things that are crashing and burning. That's what mine's going to be about in two weeks. So yours is mostly about kind of what's going on statewide and stuff statewide, like that. What's going on around the state. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I can hang out for a couple minutes if you have any more questions. Otherwise, I know everybody's busy. So it was nice to see some faces. And uh, thanks for coming. I hope you got something valuable out of it. Dan, I got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead, Nan. Um, do you have any recommendations, tips, or maybe what you do for like greetings and salutations in your videos? That is a good question. Like the actual words that you're saying. Is yeah, or like general or philosophy, because I, with my beginning videos, I, I kind of ended them awkwardly, and, um, and even beginning them, you know, there was a while where I was like, hey, it's Dr. McGathy, blah, blah, I'm like, and I, and I said that every single time, and right. like, oh my gosh, so when you like go through the videos, it sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that in the, like, because some of the lecture ones that I made for account three in the spring that I was, I had to like stay up so late because the kids are up. Like you can't got to wait when it's quiet. And now we have a dog. So now I'm like, when would I ever record? I don't know. Um, and I never did that. Oh, I think I did. I think I did. And I don't think it sounds as, it probably doesn't sound as bad as you think. Um, and here's the thing. Here's the reason why I like that because we make these assumptions that I'm recording this video for this class, but I always recommend making things public um, because you never know who's going to find it in the future, especially if those are, those are the shorter ones and it's focused on a specific topic. That's where like all of a sudden I ended up with 6,000 views in a month, not because I planned that and they're not awesome, but they're public and there's like five minute video on this like standard deviation. Oh, I can search the normal distribution. Like this one's a pop, that's one of my popular videos. I don't know why, it's not that fancy. But so, so for that purpose, oh, this is Dr. McGaffey from Prairie State College. Oh, you know, so it doesn't bother me. Um, sometimes I'll finish it kind of focusing on my current students and, you know, next time we're gonna talk about this and don't forget we have this coming up, you know, and like be casual with that. But that's where I like the weekly announcements, like they're just like, hello. I'm like, hey, how's it going? Like, I know we had a lot going on last week. This week, I really want you to remember we have our project, part two we had to be working on. It's going to be submitted this week. Kind of like talking about the week, just more like what I would do standing in front of a class. And those are much more casual. Those are not public. Those I put unlisted on YouTube. So anyone can view them with the link, but they're unlisted and then they get embedded on my, my homepage. So those are more like I'm trying to pretend I'm talking to the students. I don't know, I don't know if that's helpful. I think I just said a lot of words, but not really much. <laughs> no, that was helpful, but that answers the question, I think. Okay, cool. Thank you to Chris, by the way. I really appreciate helping me out on a short notice, showing us your cool stuff. Anybody no else have anything? If, and if anybody wants to, um, I don't know, if anybody gets stuck in OBS, I've fought against it a little bit, but it's like, it keeps getting easier. So just but let me know if you have any questions. All right. Well, I think it's time to call it. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your this weekend. So full. It was a nice way to end the week. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> yes. Thank Thanks you guys. both very much. Yeah, thank you. This is great. Perfect. You are Good very time. welcome. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording, too.